I'm done with Ica. I'm here today talking about the differences between the Chris Como move and the move that he was doing under Sean Foley. Now, I actually am one of the people who believe that there's lots of things that he did under um, Sean that I think are absolutely fantastic, but there were certain things that really did affect his driving. What we're going to do is look at the bits that I always felt um, personally affected him, and we'll, we'll see how that kind of transpires um, in comparison with the new move, and we'll also then start to have a look at how this new move should start to uh, see him drive the ball better and hit the um, ball just a lot more where he's wanting to with the type of control that we would expect to see from Tiger Woods. But what we must also say is that it's not the exact swing of um, a Butch Harmon here because there's a lot of things he's actually doing now which are a lot quieter and look a lot better than they did under the Butch era. So first thing we're going to do is just have a look at, we're just drawing a vertical line down just actually just slightly thicken this line out just a touch down at the left side of the body here okay and we can see going up the left leg kind of the hip kicked in a little the, see with the shoulder is the shoulder is also uh, you know quite a long way forwards there so it's, a, it's on the outside of the left leg now if we draw up the line now and we encompass the left shoulder you can see that it's actually angled away from the target so this is a fairly substantial difference okay now because what this is going to do is this is going to you know preset um, some of the impact alignment but we can actually see that if anything the one on the right hand side is slightly leaning towards the target on the old golf swing now we take out uh, the swing now with Chris Como we start to take it back and one thing we see is there's a very slight little head move to the right okay just here there's a tiny head move and then we see that this upper body stretching across it's actually getting a bit wider so this is one of the things that's a little bit going back to a little bit of the butch here there isn't quite as much set as early on with the driver as there was this one's back in 2013 towards the end of the season okay we'll notice the shoulder turns a lot steeper here but also what we'll see is there's a little bit more angle between the left arm and the golf shaft. We're not talking massive amounts here, but there is definitely a little bit more angle between the left arm and the shaft. Now, as we take the uh, new swing to the top, okay, we'll see that there's not quite as much lowering, and definitely because the head's been allowed to move and rotate a little bit more, he's behind the ball. Okay, now we just take the head position at the top of the golf swing from both views so we, we highlight the one under Sean here highlight the one under Chris Como here we take both back to the start and we see that it has definitely just moved over a little bit more under Chris than it did do under Sean so just get this back here it was definitely a little bit more centred under Sean, but it, it actually started to move down a touch during that backswing with Sean, and he's actually keeping his height just a little bit better right here. I think that both swings though he's turning the hips very nicely. It just looks like they've turned the hips more on the new swing due to the change in where the balance points are at address. There's nowhere near as much on his left side. Now Here's now my interesting point from, from what I like to see in the swing and one thing that I think he's doing a great job of. Okay, so we have a look of the left shoulder here versus the older one. So the first one we bring through is the one with Sean. We now notice that as he starts to move forward, this left shoulder goes down and it sticks with the chin. So at this point now, the left shoulder and the chin are still together and he's lost quite a bit of height. Now we'll bring the one on with Chris a few frames on. Okay, that shoulder isn't dropping anywhere near as much. And let's get the left arm to the same position. And we can see that the left shoulder is already starting to move away from the chin. So there is a bit of space because this left shoulder is starting to move away in this region. If we actually zoom into this, what we'd see is this left shoulder just slowly starting to move away there we zoom into the new uh, the older one and we'll notice that it doesn't move away it instead goes down on the shoulder and chin stick okay so when you get it to the same point of the downswing here okay you'll notice that 
the, although there's more angle between the left arm and the shaft in the new one, it's actually not as steep coming down. That's due to the change in the angle of where the shoulder is. So the left shoulder is actually more has worked across more level this way, and will then work upwards. But what was happening with Sean is that it was tending to work down and stick with the um, stick with the chin. This was then steepening the angle of attack. Okay. Now we also noticed that on the old one, we tended to see that the right elbow was a lot lower down here under the left. So it was it showing that it's just a lot steeper coming in. So it's steeper here. We see the right elbow quite a long way underneath the left. And we notice now nowhere near as much. Okay. So it's the same. It's the same sequence here. You see, there's a lot more space between the left shoulder and the chin, and he's not pressing down in that right in the, over that left side as much. So obviously, when that left shoulder goes downwards, he's losing height. He's pushing into the floor a lot more. What we then see is he does not have to push up away from the floor as much on the newer swing. Whereas on the older swing, now we'll notice that the head went up and back. Okay, and as the left shoulder then cleared away to look for space, what this did is, as that left shoulder went upwards, the handle kept going forwards at the same rate as the shoulder went upwards. Okay, so it looks very, very angular in the shoulders here at impact compared to the new one, but it's actually gone there in a very different manner. So the left shoulder's gone down and then up, and then that's pulling the handle forwards and upwards. So at this point of impact, here we see that there's a lot more shaft lean on the new one on the old one, sorry, than on the new one. And we'll obviously notice here that on the old one, it looked, that right hand is kind of really behind the blower impact here, and he's a lot more up on his, kind of looking for space, a little bit more up on his toes on this new swing. Uh, on the old swing, on the new swing, we tend to see that the feet are rolling more, and this is more like what I was actually seeing during the practice round at the British Open. Now, one thing that I think that is way different to um, in this era swing than the new era swing than on the one with um, Butch is that the footwork and the leg work's a lot quieter. Now what he's actually doing is that back with Butch he used to have his hips very, he's very much out racing his upper body. Now what it looks to me like is with um, Chris is that he's actually pushing down with that right foot a lot more into the floor and almost like he's kind of rotating it a little bit in this direction. This is then giving him a bit more time to get those arms in front of the body and he's not got the right elbow anywhere near as flexed halfway down here as he had when it was coming in with Sean. Now I believe that a lot of this stuff with Sean and giving that quite steep angle of attack was to do with that left shoulder dipping down and the right elbow came in a bit too flexed and then he had to obviously push up away from the floor and pop up on the shot and I always felt like it was you know very much this, that finish and what have you would never quite fitting that rest of that downswing because he was always having to push up and away from the floor because the way that left shoulder was going down steeply in that shaft. We'll see here now it just looks a lot more free as people have been saying but you know he's able to release the club naturally and get through the golf ball a lot more efficiently on this new move. So what we see from down the line here with the driver is yes he stood up a little bit more to it on the left hand side and what he's got he's got those arms a little bit further away from the body. This then allows him to rotate the shoulders on a slightly shallower angle okay well, whereas here he had the hands quite close to him what he did then is, um, on this old one, we tend to see that these hands would go inwards as that left shoulder would go down. Okay, so this was, you know, did a great, this is a great job to keep the club head outside the hands, and I thought this was a great way for him to be going with a lot of his iron swings, but what was tending to happen is this was tending to steepen him out way too much for the driver. So he had no chance of really opening that face as well as he'd like to. So it tended to work a little bit under, face was just a little bit closed and then he'd get, he'd, he'd work this out lovely to the top where he'd get it dead square, we'd be just losing a bit of height to get those arms to work upwards, so we'd have a steep shoulder right plane, and, but, but those arms were definitely above the angle of the shoulders at the top and the left arm and the club face were beautifully lined up at the top. But what I believe is happening here is just because the setup angle is a little bit different, he's able to rotate the shoulders on a flatter angle.
Okay, so therefore, because of that, he doesn't have to dip down in order in the backswing in order to get the arms to work upwards. So the arms are swinging with the rotation of the body. Well, what we see here is that on the old one here with Foley, we can see that the shoulders and the spine are lined up exactly the same as he's done here. Okay, all that has happened is on the new one. He's been able to stay in his spine due to the change in setup position and not bringing working the handle inwards quite as early. Whereas on the older one, what was happening was he was just dipping down a little bit much and just squatting into that backswing. Okay, what else we've got? He's got a lot more hip turn here, um, so creating more space. Now the hip turn's a key bit for Tiger because the hip turn is going to give him room for his arms to come down in those yellow lines on the way down. So we'll see now that those arms come down, they get in front of that hip. And we can see though that he's pushing down and through that right foot very aggressively. That right heel's staying on the ground a lot longer than it used to do. This then allows him to get the arms in front and then freewheel everything around together through the golf ball. I always felt that the biggest key to Tiger was making sure that he had enough space in the backswing to allow him to get those arms back in front of the body, but also to get that left shoulder working um, more level in the transition rather than downwards. So we we'll see on the one from 2013, we'll just see how it dips down the left shoulder and the chin stick a little bit. It's quite steep, so then he backs up underneath it as he, and he then raises that left side and the whole of the body pops up as he's looking for room and he just looks trapped there with that driver. Okay, and then there was one of the pushes that may have drawn back with this particular one but this looks like it's definitely starting a fairly reasonable amount to the right hand side he's definitely struggling for some space here as he's popping out underneath it but I do think that a lot of the footwork he had on the go with Sean was fantastic and some of those things are definitely in that golf swing right now now we'll take a quick look at these side views with the iron here. What we'll see is the footwork with Sean was definitely in place with this iron swing because we can see this is fantastic footwork. And it's different to the driver. It's rolling, the club's working around. It's got you know some very good things in that golf swing that he's still clearly employing today. That he's way better than stuff he had on the go when the Haney and the Butch era. Okay, but what was tending to happen is a little bit too bent forward there, or maybe just a little bit too low down with those hands. What was then happening as he turned back, he, he did a good job of keeping the club at outside the hands here, okay, but didn't turn the hips anywhere near as much in this backswing on the right as he has on the new one. So he's allowed those arms just to swing up a little bit more on the new swing. I know that the new swing is a slightly longer iron so that the plane will look slightly different, but the big key here is we're looking at the fact that he's turned those hips a lot more on the left hand side. What we've then got is from there, you can see there's more space for the arms to come down and around with the body. What we see here is he, he was always going to be able to do this quite nicely, what he was doing with Sean with the short, mid, maybe even towards the slightly longer irons he'd do well, but it was when he got in the woods that I thought he was always fighting some space. But we see a difference here because he's able to freewheel it a little more because he's got the arms in front of the body. We see a slightly different finish here. It's just looking a little bit more like the natural Tiger freewheel type finish rather than this abbreviated finish that he was having to employ. Lastly, I've just brought in the new swing compared with um, the swing he was doing when he was working with Butch. So what we'd see here is um, it's a mixture between the setups of what he was doing between um, the areas of Butch and with Sean. Now what we'll see is this is more of an independent arm swing under Butch, so it's a little bit steeper than now, and there's definitely nowhere near as much hip turn. I really like the sequencing and the synergy between the body rotation and the arm move under this new move. I think it's starting to look very nice. I think he could maybe just turn this right hip back just a tiny bit more. But one thing we do notice is that under the old golf swing, we saw that lower body fired very early, and that right elbow to work very hard and those arms have to come down fairly steep to get back in front of that body. What happens here is that right hip doesn't fire anywhere near as early and the arms can get more back in front of the body and the shaft isn't coming down anywhere near as steep. What we'll find from this is that this allows the golf club to come through 
on a different angle than it was right here. So it was coming through quite steep on this area, you know, a little bit higher with the handle. And then a little bit more chased here with the handle. But what we did notice is watch this footwork, watch how that foot's pushing up on the toe. There's a stall because the hips have gone so much faster than the upper body. Then everything then fires and comes through. What we'll notice on this one now is that everything comes through a lot more together. Very much got the arms in front, but there just appears to be a, a lot better sequence in between the body rotation and the arm swing here. And I really like the fact that this right leg is nowhere, not exploding off the floor as quickly and therefore getting those arms stuck. One final thing to note on the difference between the new swing and the one from um, the Butch era was at the top here, there's definitely a lot more hip rotation than there was under Butch, and the arms are nowhere near as upright as they were with Butch. Um, yes, they, um, they, I think that they look great right now, but their actual position relative to the shoulder plane is pretty much the same as it was with um, Sean, particularly when we saw those two driver swings a minute ago. Now what we'll see here though is the big difference, we'll notice now how those, that lower body exploded, look where that right knee is going out to the ball, the foot's already come up on its toe, those arms are having to work quite hard and he's having to snap that lower body back, extending and snapping the left leg to make room for the arms, which was no doubt going to cause him those injury problems which are well documented. But we'll see now there's n that right foot is in a very different position at impact or pre-impact, again both pre-impact, it's a completely different move. One's up on the toe with the knee, the right knee is past the outside of the left toe. This one is over or inside that toe box. If that's happening, that pelvis has got to be staying back. It's not going to be moving in front anywhere near as much. It's not going to be invading that space. He's not going to have to snap it back through impact or that leg. So this would be much better, obviously, on his knee, better on his back. Um, I believe that the way that he was dipping down with the left shoulder was causing a few issues in that back. But I think that this is a, a very good move. Um, but it obviously still has got a lot of the bits that Sean, I thought, did a very good job with. But a few of the issues I didn't like are starting to be ironed out. And uh, let's wait and see. And let's hopefully see Tiger Woods having a great year 2015. If you'd like to hear more from me, please visit my website, which is danwhitakergolf.com. Or you've uh, got my contact details below, including my Twitter and Facebook page.